Hello and welcome to the Literary Bar. As you know, this bar is always open and I get very excited when you join me right here. So September is here, the beginning of the famous Ember Months, when we are reminded to be careful while driving because we are coming to the end of the year. So let's make it a special September to remember. Speaking of driving, how are you coping with the new fuel price? Hmm, now, wow. If it's too expensive to go out, grab a book, or better yet, join me at the bar, because we're always open. The 8th of September is International Literacy Day. The theme for this year, 2024, is promoting multilingual education, literacy for mutual understanding and peace. If you're of a particular age, you might remember Wazobia. That was Nigeria's attempt at attaining peace or promoting peace through cultural cohesion via multilingual education. Also, September is Sickle Cell Awareness Month. And my guest today knows a thing or two about sickle cell and he's also an author. So I'm delighted to have him join us here today at the bar to talk about literacy and sickle cell. So go grab a drink and join us after the break. Welcome back. So in the past week, Nigeria got a brand new beauty queen. Chidima Adichina was crowned the most beautiful girl in Nigeria. She's really beautiful. Whatever the issues might have been, it's a heartwarming story that the proverbial stone that was rejected by South Africa in this case is wearing the crown jewel bestowed on her by her fatherland, Nigeria. We wish Chidema every success in the Miss Universe contest in Mexico, slated for November. Now, another beautiful Nigerian athlete also made Nigeria and Africa proud during the Paralympics in Paris. 18-year-old Miriam Eniola Bolaji won bronze in badminton, a feat yet to be achieved at the Olympics by an African competitor in badminton. Bolaji has reduced mobility in her left leg after an accident when she was a child. So congratulations, ladies. And not to forget the men, a king got his bride. 56-year-old King Nswati of Eswatini, formerly Swaziland, just got married to his 16th bride. And she's none other than 21-year-old Nomsebo Zuma, Jacob Zuma's daughter. The 21-year-old caught the eye of the king caught the king's eye at the annual reed dance in Umlanga Eswatini. The spectacular reed dance is an opportunity to school young virgins, young virgin schoolgirls in the Zulu culture. During the ceremony, the girls are a sight to behold. They wear short beaded skirts, decorated with fringes and buttons, together with anklets, bracelets, necklaces, and beautiful sashes. Their chastity and purity is also a big attraction for the king. So congratulations to the king and his 16th wife. And of course, his new father-in-law, Jacob Zuma, the former president of South Africa. Congratulations to everybody, the queens and the king. So after the break, you will meet my guest. And it is his birthday too. This is our first birthday at the literary bar so we'll be popping something right after the break welcome back thank you for joining me at the bar my guest today is abayomi oyelami he's a writer radio host media pr personality a genetic counselor and a non-profit leader. He's a graduate of chemistry from the Ladukia Akintola University of Technology, Lao Tech. Yomi is currently the communications officer at SAMI, Sickle Cell Advocacy and Management Initiative. But first we'll be talking about his book, Finding Purpose for Kids. But most importantly, it is Yomi's birthday. Happy birthday, Yomi. Happy birthday. <laughs> I told you we'll be popping things. So, oh. is it me or you who will be doing this? Anyone. 
make oh, oh. <laughs> so happy birthday and so mm. you mean, should I tell them how old you are yes please do it's mm. it's it's, it's <laughs> so Yomi is uh, 40 yes single Yes. Searching or we're stop searching. I'm searching. You're searching. Yes. So ladies. A A first. Ladies. They will not talk about that thing. Okay, <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. I told you, Yomi is wearing three caps actually. He's an author. He's he works for Sickle Cell as an advocate. And it's his birthday. So this is the third cap for today, the celebration cap. So Yomi, I'm really, really happy that you're here. But first of all, let's go, let's toast to you. Yes. Thank you. Happy birthday. Welcome. Thank you and very much. Thank you so much for spending your birthday with us. Yeah. And um, I'm just really, really glad that you're here. And then you have this amazing book that you wrote for children. And this plays right into the theme of literacy day for the year, encouraging um, literacy mm. through multilingual, multilingual education. education. And like I said earlier, Nigeria tried with Wazubia. Yes. And um, for a long time, it, it was amusing then, but it's still part of us, you know. Mm. So let's find out why you wrote this book. And then it's almost as if you had the full knowledge because this book is written both in Yoruba and English. English. And so that's part of the multilingual education mm. that you already uh, came up with. So Yomi, why did you write Finding Purpose for Kids? All right. Thank you very much for having me on Literary Bar today. It's a great privilege to be here on such a day as this. Yes. I first had birthday. That's awesome. I I couldn't have planned this. Mm -hmm. It's so, and that 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 takes takes us back to purpose. Yes. There is there is a purpose to everything in life. God has actually purposed us to be here. We are mm -hmm. we we weren't here by accident. Yes. So writing this book is comes to me, firstly, I know I'm a writer, I write mm -hmm. poems, I write articles and all of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, going, to, going to service about 10 years ago, I was like, what makes you an author? Mm -hmm. It is when you have a published work. Yeah. So I said, okay, now that I'm going for service, no matter how much I'm being paid, I'm going to save a part out. I want to publish myself. If I can't pay all the big names, but mm -hmm. I can publish myself. And that led to having the first, I think, first 1,000 copies of this book. Okay. And that's how I became a published author. Okay. Yeah. So, I was, in the book, I'm trying to let children know that there is a purpose to their existence. Mm -hmm. Growing up for us, they tell us, okay, what do you want to become? What do you want to become? Okay, I want to become a doctor. I want, mm -hmm. And then we see all of those things. And then mm -hmm. if, I'm, if, I look up, if I look back at 25 years, mm -hmm. sitting here today, I'm like, I don't think I'll be writing. I don't think I'll be somebody that will be on air talking mm -hmm. about books and all mm -hmm. of that. Because I was, all of my mind, I was thinking about doctor. Uh -huh. Be on the <laughs> radio. Always, be on radio. Counselor. Yes. And, and all of that. Yeah. Um, I like this book because of its simplicity mm. and also because uh, you talked about it through a parable. Yes. There's Baba Agba yes. who is uh, talking to the children, the children yes. about people trying to find, about the, the, the young men inside yes. who wanted to inherit their father, their father who was, who was a yes. good king. Yes. And even the shenanigans that went inside one of them, I think Adebi, yes, Adebi. trying to take over um, the throne. The throne. Yes. And that also keys into even the political shenanigans that we are, exactly. we are having today. Exactly. But I also love the fact that you, you talked right into the Yoruba pantheon. Okay. The oracle, the Ifa. Yes. And, and that. And so there is nothing wrong in educating children mm. from our culture yes and so when um, we're talking about cultural cohesion is mm. also encouraging children to know their background Back and the Europe's. stories yes. yes and the stories that help us to find so I would just um, want you acting like Baba Agba 
to tell the children something in Yoruba and then okay. you can translate in terms of finding their purpose. Okay, and you know what? I'm going to say, 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 I'm going what does that mean? You are saying that in the years of Heons, mm -hmm. our fathers, our grandfathers, our parents, they also have a way of taking care of their parents, of themselves, mm -hmm. their children. We also have a well-established way of life, talking about our health, our mm -hmm. education, and every aspect of our life. So we weren't just some bunch of men and women were just climbing trees and all of those things that you might have heard <laughs> that we both still people think that we're still doing they ask you uh, where are the animals do you live how many animals do you climb trees yes yes so we actually it's a culture there's an established culture called the african culture that educates that leads you on the way of life and mm -hmm. we are saying that this culture still exists yes and we can actually still take valuable lessons from there mm -hmm. and so i was using this book to marry yeah. what we have in the past bring it to what we have now and let's have a fine mix and that's what we have with this book today yeah but going the book is the book is small but mighty because there are so many lessons in it and i like when the adebi yes you sucked the powers from his from his father from his, from his from, father yes you know, and Adi Shegun was sidelined, even though they thought he was a bad person. Mm. But the brother had to pay and bribe his way into being into a king. Into the office, yes. And because he didn't have the passion for the people, mm. he ended up being a terrible, a terrible king. Terrible king. Mm. And the, the, the fact, the part where Baba was trying to teach the children that you, you can be a leader yes. at any point where you are where you in are. life. Yes. yes. Talk, speak a little bit more about that. Yes, yeah, so talking about leadership, it is and not... feel free to use proverbs uh -huh. to say that. <laughs> so, talking about leadership, it is not until you have a crown, it is not until you have a exalted office that people are saying the excellency, the excellency, honorable, and all of those things. Those are not the things that makes you a leader. Those are the things that makes you a leader. You are a leader in every sphere of life that you find yourself, where you are making impact on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to come with the clout. It doesn't have to come with all the noise. It can just come in all the little ways of life that you do, all the things that you do. Mm -hmm. Your words of comfort, your encouragement here and there, those are the things that makes you a leader. Mm -hmm. It's not until you... We have you in the front of the camera, for example, mm -hmm. before you know that you are actually leading. Yeah. So live your life purposefully mm -hmm. and then be sure that what you are doing, you are actually impacting lives yes. in a positive way. Yeah. Let everybody that leaves you live with a smile. Let everybody mm -hmm. that leaves you live with a joy that mm -hmm. I met someone today who has impacted my life positively in a great way. So that is what life is all about. That is what we are saying, that live your purpose. And one, one thing is your life connects with another person. Yes, yes. It we're is, all it's, interconnected. We're all yes. interconnected. Mm -hmm. So what you do in your own sphere of life connects with what someone else does in yeah. their own sphere of life too. But so we are trying to have a great... Okay, to quote him, how do we uh, give that to children? During the end, uh, bad governance. Protest. We saw, yes, the, mm. the, the protest. We saw five-year-olds that were on the street. Mm. If you, you're me, mm. now you're their Baba Agba. Yes. What would you tell this five-year-olds? About protest? No, about life, about finding a purpose, purpose in, in life. their life. Because mm. protesting... Mm. without proper guardianship is, is, will achieve no result. Exactly. So because these children do not seem to have any purpose. Mm. But in your book, uh, Baba Agba yes. was the one telling the children on how to live a better life. A so better life, imagine yes. that those children have now been converged mm. and you have to give them some advice. Mm. Before we round up the review of the this book, book, what okay. do you tell them? Okay, so some, I think I heard somewhere, else, I, I I can't lay I'm my more proverbs, you mean? All right, so I can't lay my my I can't lay to someone who says they said whatever makes you mad, glad, or sad. Mm -hmm. 
can be a link to your purpose in life. Yeah. So for a five-year-old who joins a protest, for example, or for a 15-year-old or for a 20-year-old, mm -hmm. there is a reason why you joined that protest in the first place. Do you know that reason well? That's mm -hmm. number one. Don't just join the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. Okay, why, did I, why am I doing this? Okay, it's because of a certain person or a certain group of people mm -hmm. that are not doing this and this. When you get to your own position, what are you going to do better? Yeah. That is what we see. Mm -hmm. So it is not just to join the battle and just shout and shout and shout. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to the same place and you still repeat that thing, how, does it, how are you making your life better for someone else? Mm -hmm. so, so that's so what we're saying. Finally on this book, September is right here with us and children are going back, back to school. school. Mm -hmm. So their occupation is students. Yes. What would you tell them? You me, I'm serious. I want those Yoruba proverbs. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right. So now one thing about Yoruba proverbs is, or one thing about African proverbs mm -hmm. is, you put fitting proverbs mm -hmm. to situations. Yeah, give them a proverb that they will carry back to school. To yeah. school. Okay. So I will take my mind back to... I will take my mind back to... Mm -hmm. Jeff Odunjo. Jeff Odunjo says, uh, there is, I remember. All right, let me just say, whatever, I am, whatever your hand mm -hmm. finds to do, mm -hmm. do it well. Mm -hmm. What you are doing as a student has a way of linking to mm -hmm. what you are going to do in the future. Yeah. Yes, I may not have become a doctor like mm -hmm. I wanted to be, mm -hmm. but looking at what I do today, I have been able to marry health into education. Mm -hmm. So, what if I had not been serious with what I was doing earlier? I don't think I'll be here today. Okay. If I hadn't been serious with it, okay, they said, okay, go to science class, okay, do your physics, do your chemistry, do your mathematics and everything. So you are doing it well. So do whatever you have at your at this point, do it well. Mm -hmm. So when you do it well, it leads you into a larger room. Yeah. And then you can now explore. I then do. you can now think of, okay, what can I take from this place? Can I add it to this place? How do I link everything? And then the life just keeps moving like that. So okay. Yami doesn't want to speak Yoruba for me. He's for me. No worry, okay. Fine. So <laughs> speak, on, on that me. note about him moving into health, we're going to take a short break now. And when we come back, Yomi is going to talk about something that he is, he knows a, th a tour thing about, like I said, but I'm also very passionate about mm. Sickle Cell Awareness Month. So after the break, we will go into talking about the Sickle Cell Awareness Month. Do join us after the break. Welcome back. You're still at the literary bar with Yomi as our special guest. Before the break, we're talking about a book that Yomi wrote, Finding Purpose for Kids. Yomi is not just an author, as I said. Yomi is also someone who knows quite a lot about sickle cell and being the Sickle Cell Awareness Month. I just think it is fitting for Yomi to talk to us about sickle cell. Mm. Yomi, what is sickle cell? Okay, sickle cell is a genetic disease, a genetic disorder. The United Nations in 2008 labeled sickle cell as one of the foremost genetic diseases worldwide, and they decided to put a date aside for it. So, which we now culminate into what we have as June 19, where mm -hmm. we celebrate the World Sickle Cell Day. Okay. Now, we know that one day is not just not enough mm -hmm. to talk about something like that. And so that's how we came about September, which is the a whole month talking about sickle cell awareness. Why are we doing this? We are doing this to create awareness and advocacy around sickle cell. Sickle cell does not just affect blacks, doesn't just affect Africans. If you go into the Middle East, if you go into there are various places, and in fact, with the movement of people all across the world, sickle cell is just virtually everywhere. So it is important that we keep bringing it into people's ears, 
children, adults, everybody keeps knowing about what sickle cell is and what it is not so that we can give the accurate information about it. And so we use this up months to talk about everything about sickle cell, the meats, the superstitions that you may have heard about it. And then I... Yami, yes. uh -huh, that's one superstition. Okay. Abiku, Agbanje. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Are they evil children? Or mm. we just didn't understand it? Okay, so Abiku in Yoruba culture, in mm -hmm. Ogbanji, all that we have then. So for us today, we don't hear about Abiku anymore. We don't hear about Ogbanji anymore. Why do we not hear about those things anymore? It's because we feel that probably because at those points, there wasn't enough information for people to know that, okay, this child actually has a health issue, mm -hmm. not a spiritual problem, mm -hmm. not a, a certain mother who is mm -hmm. hiding under a banana tree village, village and is causing yes. so mm -hmm. not witches, not wizards. So, looking at sickle cell today and tracing, trying to look at marrying what we hear then and what we have today, mm -hmm. we find that probably maybe some of those cases were actually sickle cell. Mm -hmm. So, and that's why we say today, Abiku is not, is not, is not an issue today. Okay. It's not an issue today. So when we say Abiku in the past was, okay, they say they have a child and the child mm -hmm. dies and the child the keeps child coming comes, and yeah, keeps coming. Just to punish the couple. Just to punish the couple. And some people will say they even lacerate the body so that yes. when the child comes, it won't be able to go back are, again. Yes, you <laughs> identify that <laughs> evil child. Yes. So Yomi, we call sickle people living with sickle cell warriors. Yes. Yomi is a warrior and his 40th birthday is beyond special because with us we have a warrior who's attained 40. Happy birthday again, Yomi. It's really amazing to <laughs> have you here to have you. this mm. conversation. And now that's another myth I want you to debunk. Mm. Because for the longest time, people assume that people living with sickle cell would not live, live beyond long. 21. Mm. But you've almost doubled that age. Yes. Yeah, almost. 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 almost yes. You've almost doubled that age. How? Can you tell parents today or people who are concerned what it means to live beyond 21 and be 40 and beyond because mm. i know that at your organization sami yes auntie just turned 59. 59 yes so what don't we get and why are we so scared why are we so scared about sickle cell is because of information basically some people have information but it's not enough some people what they have is total misinformation and that is what creates the fear that is what creates that atmosphere around mm -hmm. people and one thing about even living is the atmosphere that you live in okay if the atmosphere is not welcoming so it's it's possible that people would not be able to attain as much as they want to mm -hmm. when you have spoken so much evil into someone's life when you have mm -hmm. spoken so much hate so much worry into people's life they may get to that point when they feel that they, they just give up on life. Okay. So I, I, I was speaking with someone some time ago. I told the person, I was still in school, and I told the person, okay, you want to go into this relation, you want to go into this relationship. For me as a person, why I'm here is because I believe and I have strong hope mm -hmm. that I'm going to continue living, I'm going to live my life full, okay. live yeah. my life whole, and live my life well. Mm -hmm. So I told the person that, for some ways who live long, they need hope. Mm -hmm. They need that belief that I can actually live long. I can actually live well. Mm -hmm. I can actually live all life. Yeah. So for me, living is not just about just living. Okay. It's about full life. It's about well life. It's about all life. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, I have two of the most important questions I've ever wanted to ask anyone living with sickle cell. Sickle cell. Do join us after the break.
Welcome back. So Yomi, before the break, you were telling us about hope. But now I hope you'll be able to answer these two questions for me. It's so important. All right. You're a genetic counselor. Yes. What does that mean? Okay. For So people come to you now, they want to get married or they're already married. How does it work being a genetic counselor with Sickle Cell Advocacy and Management Initiative, which is where you actually oh. do this counseling and work? So for us as a genetic counselor, our job is more than just creating awareness mm -hmm. so counseling now counseling is a step higher than just creating awareness mm -hmm. if i go to a marketplace for example there's a limit of information i'm going to share yes. but when you comfort for counseling it means that you are ready to learn more and you are ready to engage us so but as much as we engage you we say counseling is non-directional mm -hmm. our job is not to tell you no Yes, no. Our job is to jaw jaw with you and let us think about these things. If you think you go this way, do you think you'll be able to manage? There, there's a word, there's a term you, you called it non. It's non directional. Non directional counseling. So if you say non directional, mm. it, it's almost, uh, it almost negates the fact that somebody comes to you because I come to you, you're not giving me any sort of direction. So where do I go? Now, don't forget again that religion has a lot to do with this. People mm. say it's not my portion. Mm. I'm going to marry somebody who is AS. Mm. I'm AS, he's AS. I'm SS, he's AS. Yes. I'm going to marry him because my God will not let allow me, me uh, allow me to have sickle cell children. Okay. So when you're saying it's non-directional, so me and my bobo, I'm AS, I'm actually really AS, mm. and he's AS, AS or he's SS. Mm. And we come forward and say, Yummy. Counsel us. Counsel us. And you tell us it's non directional. Okay. What do we do after talking to you? Okay, so when, when you come forward to us, our job is to talk with you. Mm -hmm. Let's interact. Mm -hmm. How did you get to know that you are AS? How did you get to know you are AS? Mm -hmm. How many times did you do this test? Was it just once? Was it just a test that you just probably when you were going to school? Mm -hmm. so, you know, you know a lot of challenges that comes with some of the tests that we do in Yes, in, so you advise people to do their tests. So we ask them times. you can go you can go forward and try and do this test again. But if when I will come to you, yes. do you have places where you recommend for them to go to? Yes, we have places that we can recommend to okay. them. Okay. So for them to go and confirm and do the test again. In fact, we have cases where some people will tell you, I'm here, yes, I, when I did it here, they said I'm here, yes, when I did it here, they said I'm here. We can even prescribe a much more true test that gives, that doesn't leave a, a shadow of error. We, okay. give, we can tell them to, okay, go and do this test and bring it back. And now let's talk about these things. If you go ahead with this marriage, it is, sickle cell is not 100% like, okay, once an AS and AS marries, they are going to, they must have an SS mm -hmm. child. No, it's not like that. It is a probability thing. It's Kalu Kalu. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's Kalu Kalu. Oh, In English, you like speak. It's Kalu Kalu. Yes. Oh, all right. It's, it's Kalu Kalu. But that Kalu Kalu is not, is not, uh, is not operated by you. Yes. So that's one thing. That's that's what makes it different. Yeah. When you go when you go to a casino, for example, you are mm -hmm. the one playing. You mm -hmm. can see where you are playing. Mm -hmm. But in this case, you are not going to see. You it. don't determine that. So okay, now um, let's talk a little bit about um, uh, genet genetic testing when a woman is pregnant. Yes. Are we doing that here? Okay. So we have we have various levels of genetic testing. Mm -hmm. We have what we call the prenatal diagnosis. Yes. Prenatal diagnosis talk about a child is still in the womb. Mm -hmm. They can test for the genotype of the child. Okay. Now, those are, it's, it's quite expensive. Mm -hmm. And that is why when we talk to people, are you sure you can even do this in this first place? Mm -hmm. If you can't do this, now imagine yeah. going to the hospital and you have to sit days and your doc, your 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 boss is telling you if you can if you are not coming here tomorrow you are losing your job and all of those things how much do you earn you even bring it down to the economics of managing a child living with sickle cell mm. and for you if you have a child living with sickle cell it does not mean you cannot have another child with sickle cell 
we have families that have as much as three children, four yes, children I've living in sickle cell. Yes, with so, their mom too being sickle cell. So, yeah. Yes. So, yes. so, so, so now, you mean this question plenty? But again, I hear that people go and do some sort of treatment and then they become cured okay. of sickle cell. Yes. Can you cure sickle cell? Can you tell us? Now, we're not medical professionals, mm. but you live and work with sickle cell. Sickle cell yes. So if anybody should know, I think you have an idea. All right. So we have levels of cures that we, with innovation and medical, break, medical cure breakthroughs now. Yes. Cures, actually. Cure, okay. Cures. Okay. So the first level that is quite, still expensive, but still quite accessible to a lot of people now, it's called bone marrow transplant. How does bone marrow transplant work? They look for a sibling or a family member who has a similar mm -hmm. construct in terms of the blood cells mm -hmm. that they can take samples from to infuse into this person. So when we say a transplant, it means we are saying the, the organ in this person who lives with sickle cell yeah. will not produce the blood cells any longer, we are going to introduce a new a new body yes. in, that, in that form of saying. Okay. To start producing blood cells okay, for that person. Bone marrow, then. Yes. So that's bone marrow transplant. Then we have now we now have, we are now talking about gene therapy now. Okay. So bone marrow transplant, what what does it do? It's now this person will no longer have crisis, we no longer have it's all the permanent. Yes, so he's no longer, the, the person is no longer going to have crisis, all, the, all of the complications that come with sickle cell. Mm -hmm. But this person will still have to marry somebody who doesn't have sickle cell. Okay, that's yes. why it is genetic. You are born with it. You are born with so it. So the person has to be careful. This yes. is really interesting. Yes. Okay. So okay. the gene therapy that we are going to now, which is still in the early stages, now can ensure that they go into the chromosomes, the DNA of the person. That's when they are born or someone like you now? So for someone like us, even for, for so people like us, gene, uh, bone marrow transplant is even, even has success rate, higher success rate in Children, younger, yes, younger pe yes. people compared to people like us who are now 40 and upwards. Mm, ba -ba -ba. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, this conversation is just so yeah, interesting. So, and yeah. uh, could you quickly tell us what you do at SAMI? Yeah, so as far as what I do at SAMI is bringing what we are doing here what now. What SAMI does. Okay, so SAMI is Sickle Cell Advocacy and Management Initiative. We were founded in 2008 by a woman by the name Tony Bijuni Adeshola, who also lived with Sickle Cell herself. She was born, she's now 59. Yeah. So what do we do? What we do is we have a, I used to say our vision is like a, a bird. We have two wings. Mm -hmm. We have a vision to have a society where sickle cell disorder is reduced. Yes. And people living with sickle cell and their families are able to live healthy, positive and productive lives. Mm -hmm. So we say that sickle cell can be reduced. Mm -hmm. We are not saying that sickle cell will be wiped out. Okay. Because even for you to, <laughs> that's a different conversation entirely. Because mm -hmm. sickle cell has a malaria connection. Hmm. That's a malaria connection. You, and you, that's, you are yeah. right. It's so now, plenty. so on the other hand, we also have people who already now live with the condition to help mm -hmm. them live healthy lives, help okay. them live productive lives. I, I know that the, the medical bills for that is crazy. Yeah. And the SAMI annually uh, does a lot of clinics and workshops for yes. people. You are doing uh, HMO for people living with sickle cell. Yes. And that brings me to the fact that every February during the Lagos City Runs, yes. Sami always um, they join has, the marathon. They yes. join the marathon and yes. they have targets for that. Yeah. Yomi is a marathon now. But please, can we just let everybody know that you only do 10K? I do 42 kilometers. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm the are. champion here. <laughs> But Yomi is so dedicated to, to this uh, cause, not just because of the fact that he lives with it, because we know that there are people living with sickle cell that, um, again, for spiritual reasons, do not want to identify with the cause publicly, because mm. they will say, it is not my portion, and we also know about the, the stigma. Yeah. So I just want to uh, encourage you, and I hope that um, in five years, ten years, we'll be here to do your... 50th, but then you will have a wife with you, Yomi. Amen. And children. 
<laughs> Twins are coming. Your miss, your miss, single though. Mm -hmm. eh? This fine boy here is single. So, ladies, he's also searching. But as he says, it must be a lady that is A A. -A. -A. Yes. Yomi doesn't play. Yomi is black to the bone. So I don't even <laughs> I don't even know how we're going to do that conversation will be another time where you tell us how you are black to the bone. But this is a bone marrow issue yes. that we are talking about. So that mm. shows you that it is really, really deep. Mm. Uh, if someone is saying it's a skin deep, but this one is bone deep. It's bone deep, yes. So please, let's be careful out there. Love is good. Loving with reckless abandon is also good. Passion, everything. But when a child is living with sickle cell, it can tear the family apart mm. because it is expensive. It is even difficult for a parent to watch a child going through crisis. Yeah. It is traumatic. Mm. So, um, Yomi, they have a website. We're going to put it, put it up there with his name so that you can reach out to Sami and even get more information. Like I said, he does a, a counseling, non-directional counseling. So there's no judgment there. You just yeah. go there and learn as much as you can. So please, Yomi, together with Auntie Toy, they said this year they don't want gifts. Just please keep donating to the cost, especially for healthcare. Yeah. Because, I mean, what is life without uh, yeah, good health? Yeah. So please, every, how, how often do you have your clinics where you give out free medication and tests? Yeah, so we, the clinic, the extra care free medical clinic is, mm -hmm. used to be a monthly clinic, actually. But because of the economic conditions that we found ourselves, we've reduced it to a quarterly. Mm -hmm. Quarterly, and so we're having, so we stagger it like that so that yeah. our beneficiaries can come they can take like probably like drugs to what two months mm -hmm. then that will last them till the next clinic and all of that so everything that we do at the clinic is absolutely free in mm -hmm. fact everything we do at sami is free yes yes it's free for and i also people. like the fact that sami employs mostly people living with sickle cell because yeah. i know how difficult bosses can be even when you have ordinary malaria yeah, how yeah. much more if it's a recurring situation yes. so your me it's just a powerhouse and um, I can't thank you enough and I hope that um, you will keep coming back but before you go we have cake for you so just going to take a short break so that we can get our cake ready and then Yomi can make his wish and then we'll round up see you shortly So it is time for the cake. So Yomi is here holding his, his cake. And um, Yomi, I'd like you to make a wish before you blow out your cake. I know some of the things that I wish for you, but it's mostly love, happiness, and joy. But you know what you want more. So please, for the first yeah. time at the bar, we're having a party. All right, so I... I wish that I keep living God's purpose for my life. Mm -hmm. I wish that I keep living God's purpose in wealth, in health, in wellness, with family. I love family. I love mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. I love my people. So, that I'll leave my people, I'll live long. Mm -hmm. I love living long. And I know I can live long, I can and live well. well, I can mm -hmm. live full life. So, yes. so, that's what I wish for myself, and yeah. I trust that God will do it. Amen. Amen. All your wishes have come true. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Because I know you're a Christian. Amen. So happy birthday, you. Yomi. We want to thank uh, Sweets and Treats, Diane Olatunde, for giving Aww. us this cake. She is a very Aww. good friend <laughs> of Yomi. So thank you so much, Diane, for, for Yomi's cake. Thank you. So Yomi, blow out your cake and then let's start eating. Should I blow it out? Yes, please blow it out. Yes, please blow it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we have more. Oh, Diane sent plenty, so yes. As we round up the program, I want to crave your indulgence to read a bit more so that kids around you will imitate reading as a hobby. Come together as friends and volunteer to teach someone who needs education. 
just like your miss your miss book said let us give children a purpose and let's help them find their purpose i also want to thank your me for coming here to talk to us about the sickle cell awareness month happy birthday again to you yomi and happy thank birthday you. to auntie toyin yeah. we just want to send you so much love and keep on doing the work that you do so let's use literacy for mutual understanding and peace thank you for staying with me but remember that the bar is always open please follow us on facebook x and instagram and do subscribe to our youtube channel at plus tv africa you can watch us on dstv channel 408 and on youtube until i come your way next time make your life a great story my name is chinidu bye bye <laughs>